Hello, Keith Rucker here, VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today back to work on making these uh, set of vice jaws for a viewer and a friend of mine uh, who asked if I could help out on this. And uh, he gave me an old worn out pair of vice jaws. I'm not sure what kind of vice this goes on. It's a five inch jaw, though it's an older vice said it belonged on his uh, family farm. Uh, I think it was his grandfather's, if I remember him telling me right. And it's been seen a hard life and they're trying to get it restored more as a family heirloom as much as anything, but also something they can continue to use in their farm shop. So uh, we're going to be working on this. So what I've already done is I purchased a, a blank of tool steel. This is some A2 tool steel, which I can harden to get to the same hardness as this. Uh, this tested that at about Rockwell 45 to 50, somewhere in that range around Rockwell 50. Um, and I've already come in here and milled the slot in the back that's gonna fit up on there. We did that over on the horizontal milling machine in a previous video, which you can go back and check out if you want. Today, uh, what I wanna work on is I wanna get the serrations put into the uh, vice jaw here. And uh, I think we're gonna do that over on the horizontal milling machine as well. So let's show you what we got and uh, we'll get started on this project. So this is the serration on the front of this, and I've already done a little bit of figuring out what I'm going to do. I've got a uh, horizontal milling cutter that's got a fairly sharp V in it that matches this pretty well. And uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to set this up over on the mill, come in here at this angle, and uh, cut that across. Now these measure about 25 thousandths of an inch deep. They're about 100 thousandths inch apart. And according to my protractor here, they're at a 50 degree angle and uh, they run in both directions. So um, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to set this cutter up over on the horizontal milling machine uh, to make that cut and we'll get a vise on there. I've got a vise that has a, a swivel base on it so we can swivel it to the 50 degrees in one direction. We'll make all of our cuts. We'll swivel it 50 degrees in the other direction, make all the cuts again. And uh, I think we'll have that knocked out. Now, I've been debating, you know, when I did this, I, like I said, I've already milled the slot in the back side of this piece. This will be the uh, side that the, the jaws will be on or the, the, the serration will be on. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut these to length and uh, stack them in side by side. It's gonna be, I think easier just go ahead and cut across both of them at the same time in the same setup rather than trying to do the length of the bar. I think I can do it faster that way. So that's going to be my game plan. Uh, let's go in there to the marble saw and we will cut uh, these uh, jaw blanks here to length and then go get, go get set up on the horizontal mill. We're over at the marble saw and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this in here. We will set this at a, a five inch width is what i want to do and i'm just going to measure off of the blade and i'm just using a tape measure here this is nothing super duper precision let's get that back there we go we'll tighten up our jaw and we'll saw that in half Verify that five inches. We're good. And we'll start the saw. I'll turn the feed on and just let it feed across. Repeat the process here. I think on this one, what I want to do is uh, I'm going to measure to the inside so that I don't have quite as much sticking out there. Right there. more cut. We 
we're getting set up over here on the horizontal milling machine now to go ahead and cut those little serrations. So uh, I've already got my vise set up over here. And what I've got is a, just a regular mill vise. It's on a uh, swivel base though. So I can turn this to whatever angle I want to and uh, tighten it down. I've got it turned to 50 degrees, which is the angle that we want. And uh, you know, I don't know if you can see it, but the gears up here, and I can kind of see that the line on the old gear is right where we need it to be. So we'll cut them in one direction and we'll swivel the vise uh, 180 degrees from that, basically bring it around, actually, I guess 90 degrees to it or whatever. We'll flip it around and, and get it going 50 degrees in the other direction. Um, and a second step, but first we need to cut all these across there. And I need to get my arbor set up. So we've got a, a one inch arbor here that we need to put in for that particular cutter that I'm gonna use. Uh, let me get that draw bar tightened up on the back side. I'm gonna move my table back as far to the back as I can go without hitting anything because we're gonna be bringing it forward. And because of the angle and everything, I just wanna have plenty of room for clearance. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring it back as far as I can. I think that will all clear pretty well right there. I'm going to tell you what, let me, I'm going to start the machine up and just uh, run it through the rapids here one time just to make sure everything's going to clear. gonna be real close right there, but we got clearance in it. Yeah. That'll work. All right, let's uh, get our cutter mounted on here. Pull that bearing out. Start with just some uh, spacers back here in the back to get my cutter moved out where I want it. It's probably far enough right there. And our cutter going right here. I need to get a key in there. Okay. And then we will continue building this on out here. Spacer two in there. Yeah, that's gonna work just fine. I'm just trying to make sure I have plenty of clearance in here for my vise as I move it forward. I don't, I think out this far, we won't be hitting the overarm support, which is up here. All right, I hadn't tightened that up yet. Let's move the overarms out. I'm gonna swing this down. that up on there. Let's tighten up our uh, nut up on the top here. We'll back that over the bearing. Lock the overarms down. There's uh, some clamps up here on the top that do just that. Tighten up the nut here on the end. And I think we've got our arbor built. I'm going to raise my table up. And I just want to 
raise it up until I barely see a starting to cut. right there and let's uh, pull everything out of the way there now I want to make my depth of cut 25,000 so I've just got a dial indicator set up here and we will just raise the table up 25 and about right there is good this is not a super accurate measurement that is uh, be real close to what the originals are uh, but that should do a good job okay i'm just going to show here i've got a dial indicator set up down here on the the saddle just moving in and out i want these lines to be 100 thousandths apart so basically 10 cuts per inch and uh, i've just got a dial indicator set up here and i can use the cross feed on the table to just feed it out now I could read this off the dial, but because my dial, one revolution of my dial is 250 thousandths, it's just gonna be confusing trying to keep track of the, uh, the, the 50 thousandths difference there every time, every time I make a circle. So it's gonna be easier just to read it off the indicator. These are not um, super critical. Uh, we just need to be them about 100 thousandths apart. It'll be fine. Uh, but I'm just showing you how I'm gonna measure that from one pass to another. And with that, I think we are ready for our first cut. Notice I have my jaw vise is sitting on some parallels here in a vise. Um, that's just to keep them level or whatever. And I'm just going to do them both at the same time. We'll be cutting both of them simultaneously. And with that, I think we are ready to go. Let's uh, get everything cleaned off this table over here and we'll be ready to start cutting. Let's see how this sounds. May not even touch it on the first pass. Barely, barely, barely. All right, we'll come out. I'm going to move my table in a hundred thousandths towards me. Right there. We'll make our second pass. All right, come in another hundred. Make another pass. I just want to take a real good look at what we're cutting here. Make sure I don't want to go any deeper or whatever. Give me a second to check this out and uh, we'll go from there. Everything looks good. We're just going to continue on here. Not a very deep cut at all. And this is going to go by uh, fairly quickly. We'll just cut all the way across just like that. Wrap it out. Pull the table in a hundred thou. Go again. We're going to evenly space these cuts all the way across the part. And once we get them all done, like I said, we'll come back. We'll turn the vise the other direction and we will come back and uh, complete that crosshatch. Rinse and repeat.
getting down here to the end of the uh, part. Just a few more passes and I'll have the uh, first half of the whole cross hatch done. From there we'll uh, turn that vise and uh, do this again. But uh, coming along good. Not taking long on these short passes. Seems to be cutting good. My cutter's holding up well. I wasn't sure how it was going to cut in this uh, on this uh, tool steel, but it seems to be doing good. And uh, I did also speed the machine up a little bit. I sped up the RPMs as well as the feed rate. Uh, and I feel like I could probably go even a little bit faster than what I am, but this is getting it done. I think one more pass here. Let's see what happens here. I don't know if it's going to cut one more time or not, but I'm going to I'm going to put it in there, I think, just to be on the safe side. Let's go another 100 thou. It might catch the corner of that. I don't think it will, but it might have just barely kissed it. All right. I think that looks good. So we'll loosen up the uh, bolts on our swivel vise. And let's see. Can I pull that to me just a little bit? Here we go. See, that'll be 30, 40, it's 50 degrees right, right there. So let me uh, tighten this back down. So again, I just took my original jaw and put it up on here and just verifying that the line in this direction looks like it's running um, at the same angle there so I think we're ready to go and I think we're just going to cut back in the same direction we just came from we should end up in the same place uh, where we started from so uh, I think we're ready to roll all right we are starting to back across here on the second cross hatch and uh, so far so good. It's just gonna take us a little while to work our way back across this block one pass at a time. Um, not the most efficient way to do this, but getting it done nonetheless. For just a one-off job like this, this is fine. If this was a production job though, you could, you could very easily have ordered a special cutter that had those teeth already properly spaced and be a single cutter and basically you could have cut this all in one pass. You've gone across at one time and it would have cut every single one of the slots simultaneously. Of course, uh, I don't have a cutter like that. But if this was a production job, um, that would be something that would very easily have been done back in the day. And more than likely that's how they made the original ones because they would have had a machine set up just doing that all day long because uh, they would have been mass producing these and they would not have had the time to cut each individual pass uh, like I'm doing it right now. But again, for a one-off uh, job like this, it's slow, but it works. All right, guys, uh, we're going to continue across this and uh, we will bring you back when we get down toward the other end and um, so far so good. I like the way this is going.
We are getting down into the short rows here. Only a few more passes and I think we'll have this uh, knocked out. Very happy with how that uh, is turning out. I think it looks great. Uh, very similar to the original. The cutters held up well. Everything has really worked great throughout this whole process. Uh, just being slow and tedious, so that's the only downside. Having to do these one at a time, one pass at a time, is uh, very slow. But again, like we were talking about a while ago, this is not a production job. This is a one-off job. Uh, if we wanted to do it fast, you know, we could have very easily invested a bunch of money in a cutter that would have made this job very efficient. You could have really cranked some parts out in a hurry um, doing it that way. And I'm sure, again, that's how the originals were done. But for what we need, this is going to be just fine. And another example of the value of a horizontal milling machine in a job shop uh, definitely has its place and uh, really fits a lot of kind of oddball jobs just like this. It uh, worked out real well for me here. Let's see, we're going to need probably two more passes here. I know we're going to need one more, and I'll probably do the second one just to be safe, just to make sure we get all the way to that corner and don't skip one. Yeah, I think that you're going to be able to see one more pass. This will be it, the last one right here. I think it's going to just barely touch that corner there. Yep. And there we go. We are done. All right. Look at that. That looks awesome. I'm real happy with how these are looking. Um, and I think that's, we're going to probably cut this video off here. I've still got the holes to drill and countersink, and I've also need to heat treat these probably going to, to mill a little bit off of the tops of these. I think they're just a little bit wider than what they need to be, even though I'm sure that this has worn down some. Yeah, we're probably going to shorten these by about an eighth of an inch just to be on the safe side. Uh, I think they'll be just fine there. But uh, we'll be doing that in an upcoming video, finishing these up. But uh, more horizontal milling today. That texture is going to work out just fine and it's a very very close match uh, to the originals real happy with how that looks the vice jaws are coming along real nice uh, very happy with the progress and uh, like i said we will pick up on this in an upcoming video and get these things finished up get the tops milled to the proper uh, width there uh, drill and countersink the mounting holes and do a heat treat and temper to get this back down to roughly the same hardness that the original uh, vice jaws are. So there you go. That'll be a wrap. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments greatly appreciated. Uh, hit that bell icon to get notifications when new videos are posted. And uh, big thank you all to Patreon supporters and other supporters of the site. Could not do everything we do without you. And with that, guys, uh, we will catch you on another video. Again, thanks for watching.